Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with my friend Todd Wagner. Hello, Rick. Hello, friends. Well, we're answering your questions on life, leadership, and the world around us, and we got one today. And the question goes like this. It's Sunday morning. I'm looking through my closet. Got all my different kind of gear in there, and I'm trying to think, what should I wear to church? So the question is, what clothing should a person wear to church? Okay, well, listen, we got to take this thing a piece at a time because you coming to church is a person who is desiring to honor God. And what you do, you ought to dress differently than maybe somebody's trying to figure out who God is. The way the world's going to dress is what's going to make me look sharp, what's going to draw attention to me, what's going to make uh, me feel comfortable. That's the way the world dresses. We shouldn't dress that way. We should dress, as it says to women in 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10, modestly and discreetly. Uh, it says to men that your whole conduct, everything about your life ought to be an example to others in the way that you dress. Um, and so all I would say is that for us, when we dress, everything we do ought to be for the glory of God and not to draw other people's attention or eyes to ourselves. We talked about this almost in another Real Truth Real Quick where we talk about whether or not we can wear bikinis if you're a girl. Or we don't have to tell guys often in this country not to wear Speedos, but there was application there. Here's what we need to know about everything we do. It's not about us. And again, we've, we've quoted this so many times in answering these questions. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. Now, here's... Something some people might be asking when they say this. Isn't it appropriate, though, to dress up a little bit for church? Because you wear jeans when you preach. I do. And there's a reason I do that. And it's really informed more by 1 Corinthians 9, 23, which is just saying, you know, I want to become all things to all men, that by any means that some men might be saved. And so I look at the culture that we're in, where people don't typically relate to those that have a relationship with God. And maybe even some of them are coming out of a church experience. Not all, but many where there was a sense of inauthenticity in the way the pastor dressed. The purpose of pastors wearing robes initially was that they would be invisible. It wouldn't be about that figure. It'd be almost like this um, voice speaking out of, hiding behind the lectern. It was about the word of God, not the individual. And let's just be honest, man, in the day of celebrity pastors and uh, how we need to dress and celebrity worship leaders, it's all about the dress and the hairstyle and all that sometimes. What I try and do is dress in a way, in our culture, that doesn't make people talk about the wear that I dress. Now, there might be some people who go, my pastor always needs to look sharp and uh, be excellent in the world's eyes and the way that he dresses. What I would tell you is in the community that I live in, the people that we are reaching, the broad swath of them, the way that I dress is not a distraction to them. At least I believe that. And I'm always asking others around me, is that continuing to be true? I don't dress the way I want to on Sunday morning because it's the most comfortable for me. I dress because I think it's the best way to not get in the way of what I want it to be about. Uh, even with our staff here, you know, people would say, is there a dress code for what staff needs to wear at Watermark? I say, yes. Here's the dress code at Watermark. Don't do anything that would cause the ministry to be discredited. These are borderline. That, but. that, that is definitely uh, causing some issues. But let me just say this. I, I really do believe that what God wants us to focus on is not the external. Uh, God is looking the outside, as men does. But the scriptures talk about what we should put on as worshipers. In Colossians chapter 3, it says this. It says, but now, having been brought into relationship with God, this is verse 10, put them all aside, these things you used to wear, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech from your mouth, do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices, watch this, and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. A renewal, it says, which there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, and they dress very differently. In other words, the thing that's supposed to mark us is our love. Ephesians chapter 4 talks about the exact same thing. So when you dress, you don't want to dress in a way that brings attention to yourself, that causes other people to stumble, and you want to make sure that your primary concern is to adorn yourself in the fruit of the Spirit and a faith walk with Jesus Christ much more than any other specific clothes. But I would ask myself, there are places that I would go to preach, Rick, I would never wear jeans. And I usually ask when I'm going to communicate somewhere, what is going to allow me uh, to communicate to your people in a way that what I wear is not a distraction? That's the way you ought to come to church and spend more time getting the heart ready than you do your hair. Yeah, and you know, the kind of the other extreme of that as we leave is I've heard people before, I've invited them to the church, and they've said, hey, man, I, I don't have any church clothes, man. I, I, you don't want me to go. I don't have anything nice in my closet. And I just say, man, just come. We just love right. for you to come. Come as you are. That's why we do it. 
That's that 1 Corinthians 9.23. We want to make sure they're welcome right here. We want them to hear the gospel, not come looking like they think they should look. In fact, that's why so many people don't come to Christ. They think they get their life cleaned up before they can come to Jesus. That's crazy. Christ is the one that cleans you up. And once he cleans you up, he changes your closet because your closet's not about you anymore. It's all for him. Great stuff. Hey, so put your jeans on, grab a cup of coffee, and we'll see you next Sunday and then next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.